win it! Wow! Oh man, it being just posterized, Russell Westbrook! You love the Philadelphia Eagles! Let me get a hell yeah! What is up, everybody? What's going on? It is Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Welcome to Party on Broad. Joining us today is our co-host, Justin. Follow him on Twitter at Justin J. Bradley. What's up, Justin? What's going on, Chris? How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. How about yourself? Good. good. Sixers got a good win on what day was it? Saturday night? Or it was Saturday night, and then now they play the Clippers tonight, so I'm excited to watch that game. Of course, and uh, yep. pitchers and catchers day, man. Just yep. everything's good. I did a Phillies podcast this morning. I'm just I'm just ready for, for some Phillies baseball. Um, but let's talk about some Eagles on tap for today. We are going to recap episode two of All or Nothing. Um, starts out pretty bleak, but ends a lot better. Uh, let's do a recap. You ready to go, Justin? I'm ready to go. All right. So All or Nothing episode two starts off with Nelson Aguilar and we're gonna get into this because uh, the theme of this episode was family and Nelson's kind of (laughs) struggle with his just mental psyche Uh, we see Jeff Lurie make a speech in the beginning uh, in quotes this is a very talented football team but talent only takes you so far Uh, I feel like that like little speech by Jeff Lurie took away everything episode one was talking about because I feel like episode one they thought that this team was destined this team was going to make a deep run in the playoffs and all that and then boom they throw Jeffrey Lurie and saying you know this is a family and all this like talent can only take you so far but yeah we're gonna see that uh later on in the season um but thankfully we only saw <laughs> in like two minutes of the Lions game. You were there, man. Yeah. What was it like for that Lions game? Um, it was fun. I mean, it was right after that Falcons loss. So uh, it was a little, a little, little I mean, it, Eagles game, especially in the beginning of the season, it's really nice out. You know, everyone was, the link was rocking, as people say. Um, but, you know, that was the first game I've ever gone to that they lost. So it was a bit of a different vibe walking out. I actually did leave before that, like, block field goal and then the Hail Mary attempt at the end. And I was actually watching the game on the big screen right outside the entrance there at the link. And uh, we were all sitting there around and Wentz threw that ball right into JJ's hands and he <laughs> dropped it. And then we all left. But um, it was, I just, I remember walking out of that stadium and being like, we really lost to the Detroit Lions. <laughs> like, that's all I kept telling myself. But yeah. Amazing. What do you remember? Oh, man. So the the episode showed you the Nelson Aguilar drop and fumble. Uh, we saw the Dallas Goddard uh, clear drop. I think it was in the end zone. Just a beautiful pass by Carson Wentz. Um, and then we saw a fourth and 15 drop by JJ. Um, for such a for a guy that's like was literally drafted because he was great at catching those 50 50 balls. He dropped it. So frustrating, man. And, you know, the Eagles lost this game 27 to 24 to the Detroit Lions. I mean, how do you not, you know, immediately go to the drop passes? Like eight drop passes, six different wide receivers, whether it was Ertz, Goddard, Aguilar, JJ. Like it was everybody. It was a collective uh, clusterfuck of just lack of concentration. Uh, if, If the first episode of All or Nothing was all about Uh, missed opportunities Uh, this episode starting off with mistakes and that was my takeaway man the the drops were just killer man and we they didn't even really get into the three fumbles which was also yeah two were sanders right yeah man it was just a brutal although mal sanders did have that big kickoff return uh, that got him going in that first half Um, but that was kind of the theme of this game the offense got going then the defense picked them up and i thought uh, my takeaway of the Detroit Lions game was that was a real kind of microcosm of the entire Eagles season, man. I don't know about you, but that's how I felt all season long. When the, yeah. e- when the Eagles offense showed up, the defense was terrible. When the defense showed up, the offense was just nowhere to be found. Uh, they never were on the same page really until late in the season. And... Uh, that's just kind of where I went to the Lions game. It was just a, another miserable game um, that was just nothing but mistakes. And it had me really questioning Doug Peterson, uh, not Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz was great in this game. Um, Jim Schwartz, uh, and most importantly, the secondary, um, which we're going to get into also 
in the next game when we get into week four. Uh, any other takeaways with that Lions game, man? Um, well, those those week two and three, those were the two games that the Eagles, if they would have won, they would have been eleven and five. Let's say those are two. <laughs> they would be eleven and five instead of nine and seven. But um, I do remember also that was the game where Miles Sanders nearly got his head ripped off, if I remember correctly, um, the kickoff, and they didn't call anything wow. for face mask or anything. You remember that, Chris? His helmet was like backwards. I, I'm I yeah. sadly I remember it. I don't I, I just you're right, man. That just so many so many plays like that this year, it was man. A weird game, yeah. It was a weird season, yeah. Yeah, right, man. Uh, then the episode moved on to some light moments, which I really enjoy with this. These are kind of my favorite parts so far. Uh, we're halfway through episode two, where we see Brandon Graham and his family eating at a restaurant. Uh, Brandon Graham literally goes, "We gave that game away." I thought that was a nice touch. Uh, but my first take. I don't know if you picked this up, but are NFL players allowed to eat chicken wings what, during the NFL season? <laughs> I mean, why not? I mean, it does. I mean, I don't see why you can't enjoy yourself here and there. You know, I I think it was Chickies and Pete's, wasn't it? It, 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 was, it probably I th- was. I think yeah. it was, but <laughs> I mean, I I couldn't turn down crab fries if it was ever offered to me. So mm, I love a good chicken wing. <laughs> yeah, that is like my that is my that is my kryptonite. Is yeah. uh, I. I there's not many foods out there that I crave, but chicken wings, man, yeah. they, oh, I love chicken wings. I thought that was interesting. I thought like in my head, you'd think they're on some sort of like diet, yeah. some sort of like, you know, food program. Chicken wings? <laughs> Probably yeah, not I mean, it's list. protein. <laughs> it's protein. <laughs> it is protein. Um, yeah, so uh, then we got into, uh, then the, the, the shift of this episode from the Lions went into Hakeem Law, who saved the baby the babies from the fire uh and had that infamous uh comment about nelson aguilar that that just spread like wildfire all over social media in philadelphia uh what was your reaction to that one? um i remember because it was a late night event that, that that whole fire so i woke up and that was like one of the first things i saw on twitter and i was like this is philly for you this is philly sports fans they'll they'll be saving babies and they'll make a reference to a a, a sport an NFL, a eagles game moment from and they compare it to saving a baby it's just crazy that's why i love uh being a fan of all the philly teams it was fantastic and i loved how nelson played it off really cool uh he invited him to a game uh, so he took it all but i thought it was also interesting they showed him uh before the packers game in the locker room shooing away the media saying i'm in my woo stop man just uh, i respect that he doesn't want anyone to kind of get in his head and stuff but is that not like solidify like this guy's a mental case, man? Like there's so much of his game is mental problems are mental and ugh, just frustrating knowing how talented he could be. Um, mm-hmm. It's definitely the end of Nelson Aguilar in Philadelphia. Uh, do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree. He's a great guy, man. Uh, but you know, it's just I I can't see it anymore. I I just can't watch it anymore. Yeah, just a really painful to watch. Like. Uh, what could have been, you know, that's kind of my yeah. takeaway with Nelson Aguilar is that uh, just another first round pick wide receiver that just Chip Kelly pick. Yes, just failed. Um, but the, the, the mental health thing, man, I, it's, it's hard to watch. It's, it's really painful. Um, I'm not angry. I'm just more disappointed, you know? Yeah. He needs to go to a f- nice Florida team like the Dolphins or the Bucks. Yeah, get him yeah, away yeah. from here, you know, just get some money. He'll definitely get paid, I'm sure. Yeah, he's gonna get a good contract too. That's a. That's a I, I hope he has a lot of success in his future. Um, then we move on to uh, one of my favorite parts of the episode was Avante Maddox and Dallas Goddard lived together. I didn't know that. Did yeah. you know that? Yep, they're good friends. Uh, they actually, well, they talk about it. They they roomed together when at the combine too, which is coincidental. That's how they first became friends, and then they drafted them together. So it was real. It's a really cool story. That's fantastic. And we saw uh, Nerf Gun Wars, man. I don't know about you, uh, but I'm a big kid. Like my my wife and I are big kids. We're big Disney freaks. Like we we go see movies and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I just I'm jealous. I would love to yeah. join the. I would pay. A ridiculous amount of money to, to play Nerf Gun Wars with Avante Maddox and Dallas Goddard. What about you? <laughs> yeah, I'd lo- I'd just love to live in that house. Man. <laughs> that house is huge. Yeah, right. That was awesome. Um, then the episode moved quickly into the Eagles Packers game. Uh, I, my takeaway with this game was 
There's no way they're going to beat the Packers. It was Thursday night football. Aaron Rodgers, the Eagles were in shambles. They are inconsistent. Tons of mistakes. Uh, they're not playing like a team. No team chemistry. Uh, they didn't have an identity at the time. They're literally learning how to play together on the fly. And then what happened? <laughs> yeah. Well, they won. Crazy, I mean, right? It, yeah. It, I mean, that, and then Alshon came back. He came back. They announced him at the beginning of the game. Everyone was hyped because we finally got our number one wide receiver. At least what we thought was the number one wide receiver back. He did play really well, though, that, this game, too. I mean, so did Jordan Howard, three touchdowns, but obviously we'll get into it here. All right, so, yeah, man, this is just a one of, easily one of the best wins of the season. Uh, the Packers scored quickly. It was 10 to nothing, really, to start the second quarter, and the team was just dead to rights until a Miles Sanders kickoff return uh, that put the Eagles right back in scoring position. And it was really cool uh, to see Carson Wentz literally – carry the offense on his back you know be that leader moving the offense in a positive direction for the first time um touchdowns to goddard and alshon gave the eagles the lead in the first half uh, a 21 to 13 lead at one point in that second quarter um just you know just getting good vibes again was really kind of the main takeaway of that first half because there weren't many um <laughs> this eagle season so far we saw a derek barnett strip and rogers we saw a goal line stand um but the Eagles won, but uh, Avante Maddox, man, I loved how they kind of focused on Avante Maddox getting picked apart by Aaron Rodgers. And, you know, cornerback is one of the biggest needs for the Eagles this offseason, whether they double dip in the draft or, you know, sign one in free agency, either or, um, or a combination of both. That's very likely. Um, but Avante Maddox, man, what happened to him this season? I don't know, but um, I still have high hopes on him. I mean, he was only a fourth-round pick, so, I mean, he's, he's not supposed to be, like, a top-tier talent at cornerback, but I think he can be a solid corner in this league. I think they might even move him to, around a little bit to experiment with him with this new DBs coach. Um, we'll have to see what they do, though. Yeah, it's a good call. Um, I came into this season thinking Avante was going to become a pro bowler. Like, that's how high I regarded Avante Maddox in that slot. Um, just, I, just being a beast and nickel packages, um, it just, it just didn't happen. And when you see Avante get picked apart and then he got hurt by colliding into Andrew Sandejo, <laughs> man, I am so like your favorite player like that. Exactly. We, if you watched our first episode, uh, Andrew Sandejo was the player I wished I could never hear that name ever again. And it made me angry in episode one and we get it again. And my boy Avante Maddox gets taken out by freaking Andrew Sandejo. Uh, that was very painful. Um, just a disappointing season by Avante overall. Um, and we saw uh, um, what, what, what happened next. So the Eagles offense then goes cold, and then the defense won. It was a deflection pass uh, right in the hands of Nigel Bradham for the interception. The Eagles moved to 2-2 two and two on the season. They won 34-27. to 27. Carson Wentz had three touchdowns on only 16 completed passes. Man, it was just a, a heroic win, man. Like for where, like it was also kind of a good summary of the, an Eagles game in the sense that this whole season was this, just yep. highs and lows, roller coaster season where every time you think they're down and out, they're they surprise you and they win. Like this, they had no rights uh, winning this game. What about you? I mean, I, I mean, I'm always really biased with games. I always think we're going to win every single game. But um, I, I, had a, I don't know. I just Like I told you last episode, when Carson Wentz is behind, you know, is the leader of the offense, I always feel like we have a chance to win, a good chance. And, um, I, and this was a game that really showed out, that he showed out in. And then the next day, they're, they're talking about on the radio saying how legit he is. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the Carson Wentz. <laughs> My, uh, my last take of this game, and it was a good one, was because it was Thursday night, and I had already planned to have a, we did a podcast right after this game to react to the- With Eagles. Brian, right? With Brian. Yeah. Yes. And I'm like, in my head mentally, I'm like preparing myself to, you know, get my head shoved in like dog shit the entire podcast, and it didn't happen, man. We won. And you know, I tried to play. I tried to play it cool. I tried to like not kind of rub my nose in the victory too much. But that was a really fun time. Was 
Brian, uh, Michael Jacobs from the Painted Lines joined uh, Party on Broad here as we reacted to the win. And it was just, it was wonderful. Just one of the best Party on Broads of Eagle season. Uh, any final thoughts, last comments before we wrap it up, man? Um, well, I just remember two things um, from this game where in the beginning when Wentz was there in the beginning warming up, he was talking to Earth saying how it reminded him of Friday Night Lights. That was really cool. And then it was cool seeing him uh, talk to the ref about how don't call me down if I'm not down. Because we all know Wentz last or against the Falcons, that miraculous throw where he was half. I don't know how he got that off, but um, it's cool to see those little um, little tidbits of you know stuff we don't hear. And um, it was also really cool to see the heart of Avante. Uh, when he was down on the ground, he was saying, we got one minute left, like, I got this, I can go back in. When obviously, he wasn't going to, but it was really cool to see how much uh, this team means to him. And, um, yeah, I'm really happy that we drafted him. Uh, it was really funny. I liked how you brought up the, the referee uh, moment because there's also a part where the referee was saying how the fans were calling him an a-hole in Philadelphia. <laughs> and Carson Wentz's reply to that was like, they're much nicer in person. <laughs> yeah, you must have heard them wrong or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, that guy just has a heart of gold, man. It's just so funny. All right. Um, any last things you want to plug before we wrap this up, man? No, just follow me on Twitter, Justin J. Bradley. Uh, drafts, we have some draft things coming up. I'll see if I have time to write any more. Um, yeah, just I've so subbed to the YouTube channel. Awesome sauce. Uh, that is Justin. Follow him on Twitter at Justin J. Bradley. Uh, for myself, for Justin, thanks for watching, guys. Stay awesome. Russell Westbrook. You love the